him. There's no question he is. This is a future MVP. His brother can play, y'all. How do you guard that? How do you guard it? I'll be declaring for the 2016 NBA Draft. MVPs before he's unaware of how old Thon Maker actually is. Cheetah on a stroll. Thon Maker was at one point one of the most hyped up draft prospects of the 21st century. The seven foot giant exploded onto the scene as a viral sensation with one of the most impressive high school mixes to date displaying guard-like ball handling and shot creation, a silky smooth jump shot, and the highest vert ever recorded for a player of his height. Thon even had the stamp of approval for an all-time great who was once in a similar position in Kevin Garnett. He had all-time great potential with an all-time great work ethic. Greatness seemed inevitable. That was until Thon Maker's career went up in smoke before ever coming into fruition. Riddled with controversy, drama, and fraud, the case of Thon Maker is an odd one with a life full of tribulation dating back to his earliest days. It's no secret that this year's playoffs is some of the most competitive play in a while, and with today's video sponsor DraftKings, we're upping the stakes on this year's race for the chip even more. DraftKings Sportsbook is offering a killer promotion, giving all new customers $150 in bonus bets instantly. You heard me right, new customers will receive $150 in bonus bets instantly after any $5 wager. Wondering what you could use $150 in bonus bets on? I might take a shot on their same game parlays combining multiple bets from the same game into one big shot at the pot. If you are not in a state with mobile sports betting, you're still in luck. You can get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where they offer cash prizes for nearly every sport. Download DraftKings now and use code SWISHCOUNTY to claim your $150 in bonus betting. And a big thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Born in South Sudan during a bloodbath of a civil war that claimed over 2 million lives throughout its tenure in a country with a population of just 10 million, the war zone was not suited for normal life and at 5 years old, Thon and his family were forced to seek asylum out of his home country. They were one of the lucky ones, fleeing to Uganda, they were able to find safety for a year before being accepted as refugees in Perth, Australia. This is where life began to settle down and Thon experienced his last bit of normalcy. Things began to change at 14 years old when Thon was discovered by talent scout Edward Smith. Smith had found NBA talent prior to Maker in similar scenarios. Australian Sudanese talent is actually an emerging trend on the basketball scene, and a 7 foot 14 year old with elite footwork from playing soccer his whole life is well… interesting. Thon moved to Sydney where Smith would cover his family's expenses while Maker played for St. George Basketball Association. Smith got Maker involved in talent camps in the states and began to get noticed by all types of scouts. He picked up the game extraordinarily quick. To escalate both his game through playing better talents and to put himself in a better position to garner attention, Maker jumped ship to the United States to play at a couple schools in Louisiana. This is also when Thon's life would be changed forever, as his play would push him into an internet star. Thon Maker's highlights got sucked into the media machine as mixes of an 8th grade giant with a great shooting stroke, good footwork, a high vertical leap, and surprisingly good facilitating skills pushed him all the way to the second best player in the 2016 class. Moving to Virginia at Carlisle Private School, Thon turned potential into actual greatness at 22-13-2 with 1.4 steals and 4.5 blocks over the next two years. It's no wonder why everyone was talking about him. Thon cemented himself into the Ball's Life Hall of Fame with one of the greatest hoop mixtapes on the internet, shooting from everywhere, dunking on everyone, crossing into pull-ups, and swatting balls to the moon. This was one of the best tapes of all time, and winning a state chip and Virginia Player of the Year stamped himself into not only internet stardom, but into NBA discussions as well. He bounced out of the US to seek an opportunity in Canada and ended up playing for Orangeville District Secondary School. Thon would go on to show out against elite talent like Dennis Smith Jr. and Harry Giles over the next two years. He finished his career as a 5 star recruit with enough hype to kill a horse and a number 10 ranking in the class of 2016. He had offers from top schools like Kansas and Kentucky, but this is where it got kind of funky. 
Thon completed his schooling in three years technically, finishing his academic obligations in high school before coming back for his senior year. For this reason, Thon was technically graduated from high school for a calendar year, and for that reason he was actually NBA eligible. Being the first high school player drafted to the league since the one and done rule was implemented was very odd. And largely for that reason, his draft stock was also very... odd. <laughs> Thon had a lot of questions with his game. It was proven that he could shoot the ball and his handle was very tight for a 7 footer. The combine also proved that with a 32 inch vert, he was one of the most explosive bigs ever. There was a lot to like about the guy and even Kevin Garnett seemed to notice. The two began working out and Garnett had a lot of good to say about him, comparing Maker's work ethic to the ruthless drive of his own, and even would say he's a future MVP at one point. The two were compared very extensively, and YouTube and other social medias were all over this guy. But that's not to say that he wasn't an enormous gamble. He really was barely scouted by anyone coming into the NBA. The majority of tournaments he played in were private and closed off to scouts. He kind of seemed to avoid open camps, and a lot of people thought this was a plot to hide the holes in his game, which certainly were there. Because his game was strange. I mean, it was built in a way that he could kind of dominate lower levels of basketball, but he was kind of positionless to play in the NBA, and what I mean by this is that he is quicker than fours with a tighter handle and a smoother jumper than the majority of them, which is a big benefit, but he was also not physically built enough to be a four, and not gifted enough to hang with the threes. His physicality and natural skills were greatly questioned, and his game was thought to probably be more raw than meets the eye. For this reason, it was thought that he might be the guy to come in and grab the league by the balls, or he might just not have a role in it whatsoever. Just hours before the draft bells rang, NBA reporter Jake Fisher tweeted out that several teams had completely ruled out the possibility of drafting Thon due to a conspiracy of him falsifying his actual age. Infamous photos of yearbooks began to surface of him and his graduating class of 2010, making him in his early to mid 20s, not 19. This was one of the oddest conspiracies ever. And his interview response didn't help his cause. Now we gotta ask you about some of the stories we heard today about your age and the questions about whether you're 19 or how old you are. What, what is your response to, to some of these allegations? I didn't have a response for it because I know it's not true. And if it were true, it would have made me angry somehow. It made me sideways somehow. But I know it's not true. And I, you know, obviously, that's why. Stuttering over his words, and as suspicious as it can be, the internet did their best to piece together a time frame of what really happened with Thon's basketball career. In this alternative time frame, Thon graduates in 2010 from Catholic College in Perth, and during this time he had no professional basketball aspirations, or even a chance to really play in college anywhere. This is when he meets Smith, similar to the reported timeline, who helps falsify legal documents and reinstates Thon at a local club. Time goes on and these viral 8th grade hits of this 18 year old get him into the brightest lights. Very speculative and very easy to manipulate, but with the lack of a real birth certificate in Sudan, seemingly possible. The controversy, questions, and technical flaws created the widest range of mock drafts I've ever seen. He could have gone in the lottery, but was also predicted mid-second round by others. I've really never seen anything like this. NBA Draft.net predicted Thon to the Bucks with their second round selection, which proved to be a pretty damn good prediction. Well, kind of. Thon was taken by the Bucks, 10th overall. They really pondered him, I guess. It made sense, taking a chance on a long athletic project who has the potential to shift the power in the NBA. Yeah, they're pretty good with these guys. The Bucks took a huge chance on this guy using a mid lottery pick on probably a second round player. They immediately got him in the same training program as Giannis, got him eating six meals a day, and provided the resources to develop him into an NBA post. The controversy around his name turned to primarily just hype, and kind of disappeared for good. I mean, the possibility of Giannis with the next Kevin Durant or Kevin Garnett is just kind of cool to imagine. The Bucks had a few good options on the blocks, and with Giannis and Jabari taking most of the minutes at the 4 spot, Thon was a full-time 5 in his minutes on the floor. They weren't super plenty full, he racked up just 10 a game, and through his play his rookie year, it was clear he wasn't a 5 at least. It wasn't the worst season in the world, his numbers weren't very good, but he did shoot the ball well from deep at least. 
and he did have some potential as a shot blocker. He was the same guy and he was still athletic as hell, but there were more cons than pros with his play. His post defense was horrendous, I mean the guy was not strong enough to guard on the block. He could block shots but tended to foul more often than not, and his basketball IQ was like okay at best. His dribble wasn't really that strong to be honest, and he wasn't the most aggressive guy either. If he's setting a screen, he was looking for jump shots out of it, kinda just didn't bother attacking enough as he should've. All in all, he wasn't the best player, but the glimpses of hope were definitely still there. I mean, even if he just ended up a stretch big, there's probably a spot for him in the NBA. And with more minutes, there was hope that the future phenom could actually be a phenom. But uh, yeah, that, that didn't happen. And not even close, really. He kind of stunk it up the next year, despite a jump to 17 minutes a game. His scoring average jumped 0.8 points in an extra 7 minutes. His shooting splits also dropped below league average, and his shooting percentage around the rim dropped from 64 to 54 percent. That's really, really bad, especially for a 7 footer, and he frankly kind of sucked around the board. I'm usually pretty generous to these guys, I mean I understand how hard of a shift it must be, but to call a spade a spade, every criticism of Maker's game was correct. He wasn't as good as we thought. At other levels of basketball, being a jack of all trades was his calling card, because he was better than everyone else in every one of those areas. But as the competition increased, he turned into a role-less player not really good enough to fit in anywhere. My assessment before proved to be true. He was in between positions and couldn't guard a single position in the NBA, and showed clear regression from his mediocre at best rookie season. Thon requested a trade in the following year after Coach Bud dropped him out of his role, and the Bucks landed Nikola Mirotic in a three-team trade, sending Thon to Detroit. Absolutely nothing changed there either. Thon did not get any better at all after this point. And after two not-so-interesting seasons, Thon was out of the league entirely after a two-week trial in Cleveland. His collapse in the NBA is quite interesting, although really not all that surprising. You gambled on a player, if it hit he could have been the next unicorn, but if you didn't develop you get, well, you get Thon Maker. The scares of drafting a kid who might be in his 20s with really no room to grow were why his stock fell so bad. And that's really what happened too, statistically, he really was the same player year 4 that he was on day 1. Maybe this was just a one sly move from an Australian con artist cashing out on the NBA money from his investment. Or maybe the NBA is just one tough league. All I know is this is the Thonmaker story. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you boys in the next one. Peace out.